All right, let's dive straight in. Today, we're talking about the desync endgame. Everything you thought you knew about request smuggling, it's time for an update because the entire game has been turned on its head. But first, the important part. Everything we're about to go through is for education and for security pros doing authorized pen testing with explicit permission. Okay? Let's be the good guys. So for years, it felt like request smuggling was a solved problem. Turns out, that was just an illusion. The classic detection methods are basically dead thanks to WAFs, but the real, underlying vulnerabilities? Oh, they are alive and well. Here's the deal. WAFs got pretty good at spotting the obvious stuff. They just use simple rules to block any request with both a content length and a transfer encoding header, and this has created a false sense of security. The servers haven't been fixed, We've just broken our old tools. The flaws are still lurking under the surface. So this is our new hunting ground. Forget the old payloads. Now we're looking for parser discrepancies. It boils down to two types, visible, hidden, or VH, where the front end proxy sees a header, but the back end doesn't, and hidden visible, HV, which is just the opposite. Finding one of these is your way in. It's the first thread you pull to unravel the whole thing. And here's how you weaponize that. If you find a way to hide a content length header from the front end, that's a VH flaw, you can trigger a CL0 desync. This is so much stealthier than the old attacks. The front end sees nothing wrong and forwards a request, but the back end, it sees that hidden content length and it patiently waits for a body, which happens to be the very next user's request. And just like that, you've poisoned them. Okay, so with that foundation, we can now go after the attacks that people literally thought were impossible to pull off in the real world. So let's talk about the infamous 0.CL desync. This is where the front end doesn't see a content length, but the back end does. For the longest time, everyone just wrote these off as unexploitable. So why? What was the roadblock? It's this deadlock. It's like a digital standoff. You send the request and the front end forwards the headers and then just waits for a response. But the back end sees the content length you hid, and it waits for a body that you're never going to send. So both servers are just stuck staring at each other until the connection times out. Your attack goes nowhere. The key to shattering this deadlock is beautiful in its simplicity. You need to find what's called an early response gadget. Basically, it's any feature or bug that forces the back end server to send a response before it gets the full request body. If you can trigger one of those, the deadlock is broken and the desync is back on the table. And here's a brilliant, almost hilarious example of one. You know those reserved file names in Windows? Well, if you request a path like slash con from an ISS server, Windows itself throws a fit. This forces ISS to send back an error response immediately without waiting for the body. It's the perfect deadlock breaker, and it's been hiding in plain sight in old documentation for decades. Amazing. All right, so now we can actually trigger a point CL desync. We've got our proof of concept. But how do we make it do something evil? How do we go from just breaking things to actually hijacking a victim session? I mean, getting a 400 bad request is great for a report, but it's not a takeover. To do real damage, you need to be able to inject your own malicious prefix into someone else's request. And that means we have to level up. We need to convert our shiny new 0CL desync into the far more powerful CL.0 desync. The answer is this really slick two-stage attack called a double desync. First, you fire off your point CL request with that early response gadget to poison the connection. Then, right on its heels, you send a second, different request. Because the connection is already in that poison state, the second request can now pull off a classic point CL attack, dropping your malicious payload right onto the socket, waiting for the next victim. Now, if you thought that was getting complicated, hold on. There's an even more powerful attack vector out there. It's an ancient header that is basically a ticking time bomb for pretty much any modern layered web architecture. I'm talking about the expect 100 continue header. The idea was simple. A client could send its headers, wait for the server to say 100 continue, and then send the big request body. Well, this two-step dance is a total nightmare for proxies. What if the front end doesn't support it? What if the back end sends something other than a 100? The result is pure chaos and a fantastic opportunity for desync. And look at how versatile this thing is. Just a plain, simple expect header can cause a zero-point CL desync. We saw it at T-Mobile. 
on Netlify, it could even cause a CL.0. And if you get creative and obfuscated a little bit, like adding a tab character, you can hit targets like GitLab and Akamai. It even goes beyond desync, letting you bypass security headers or even leak server memory. It's wild. And to get a sense of the scale of this problem, just look at Cloudflare. A single internal HTTP 1.1 desync bug found deep inside their network put over 24 million websites at risk. One tiny parsing mistake, catastrophic blast radius. And yes, this stuff pays. One single technique using an obfuscated expect header to get a CL0 desync on a Kamai's network led to 74 different bug bounties from their customers. That's a grand total of over $221,000. This is not theoretical. It is a critical and very expensive real-world problem. So when you put all of this together, 0.cl deadlocks, the expect header chaos, it all points to one single unavoidable conclusion. We can't keep patching HTTP 1.1. It's a losing battle. The protocol itself is the vulnerability. I mean, just look at this timeline. It tells the whole story. Every single year, without fail, a new critical request smuggling variant gets discovered. We had CLTE in 2019. Now we're dealing with point CL and expect-based attacks. The pattern is crystal clear. We can't patch our way out of this. More desyncs are always coming. The only real fix is to change the game. HTTP 1.1 is text-based. It has all these different ambiguous ways to define how long a request is. That ambiguity is where desync lives. But HTTP 2, it's binary. It uses explicit length fields in every single frame. There is zero ambiguity. If your proxy is talking to your backend using HTTP 2, this entire class of vulnerability just disappears. But look, I get it. You might be stuck on HTTP 1.1 for a while. So this is your survival guide. Turn on every single normalization and validation setting you can find on your proxy. Stick to well-known servers like Apache and Nginx. Absolutely disable upstream connection reuse, and for God's sake, start scanning your own stuff regularly. This is about harm reduction until you can finally make the switch. So let's just be honest. Upstream HTTP 1.1 is fundamentally broken. It's not safe for the modern web. The evidence is all here. The only real question left is, now that you know this, what are you going to do to help finally kill it and push for upstream HTTP 2 everywhere?